Hopkins at Southpaws. Uh, today we are doing an abdominal exploratory in a dog that has elevated liver enzymes, uh, sorry, elevated bile acids. Uh, CT scan was negative for a portosystemic systemic shunt. Uh, we're having a look in anyway, and we're going to do a liver biopsy while we're in there. Um, so if you haven't already done so, go ahead and like and subscribe uh, to our channel. Turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So midline abdominal exploratory here. So just to review, had uh, possible neurologic signs, had elevated bile acids, did a CT scan, did not see an obvious shunt. Can I get cautery turned down to 20 and 20, please? Uh, did not see an obvious shunt, so we're going in to do a... Uh, Exploratory to make sure we didn't miss something. Can you pull his penis back like that? Um, make sure we didn't miss something on the CT scan and also to do a liver biopsy to assess whether it has microvascular dysplasia. Um, now note that Maltese terriers can have um, elevated bile acids as a variant of normal. Um, and so it's possible that this is just um, normal for this dog. And we're kind of going back and forth as to whether we can justify going in surgically. Um, we discussed it with the owners um, and they were keen to get a definitive diagnosis one way or another. So the other thing that we noted on the CT scan was that the liver was a fairly normal size. So just removing the falciform fat here. As always, the keys with doing a good abdominal exploratory are number one, you need to have adequate exposure. So we need to extend our exploratory from the xiphoid all the way back to the penis in male dogs and about the same level in female dogs. We need to remove the falciform because that gets in the way when you're trying to explore. We need to put in Balfour retractors. As long as you stay ventral to the xiphoid, you won't go into the diaphragm. And so we'll start our exploratory. I'll just put a spoon in here, which is going to help centralize the Balfours. So just retract that there. And so one of the places that we want to look is right up against the diaphragm. I might get my loops on, please. Thank you. And I'm using my loops primarily for lighting so I can look way back up into that recess. Thank you. All right, so we're going to get a really good look. So I can see the vena cava here. I can see a big hepatic vein going into the vena cava. This is where I often see a zygous, photozygous shunts is up in here. So that all looks pretty normal. And the liver looks fairly healthy, maybe a little bit small. Um, so we'll do our full exploratory to start with, and then we'll have a good look for the shunt. So I'm just palpating the stomach. 
making sure there's not like a hiatal hernia or something like that. Gallbladder is here, so we'll express the gallbladder and make sure that it empties into the small intestine, which we have no reason to believe that it would not, but that's emptying nicely. This is the common bile duct right here, going into the small intestine. We'll lift this up, and so this is going to be our retractor. And can you hold on to the duodenum there? That's a Peyer's patch, by the way, right there. Pancreas is here. So just looking down there, we've got the portal vein coming in here. I don't see any no, uh, abnormal tributaries coming off the portal vein. Vena cava is down here. We've got a little bit of ascites. You can barely get a glimpse of the adrenal gland there. Normally you can't see it very well because it's underneath the vena cava. We've got kidneys here. Kidneys are a little bit large. So coming down the descending duodenum the caudal duodenal flexure. And once we get the, past the caudal duodenal flexure, we'll get into the jejunum, which is here. And I'll just run the jejunum all the way through. So that all looks normal. Pyre's patch is very prominent there, which are just lymph or, um, uh, lymphoid tissue. John and we're, asking what loops do you recommend? Uh, I, I have Heine loops, but they're very expensive. They're about four and a half, five thousand dollars $5,000, but they're the best on the market. Um, so that's the anti-medicinteric vessel that tells us that we're in the ileum. And then this is the cecum here, the appendix in humans. And then we'll get into the colon. We'll use the colon as a retractor for the left furrow. I'm just going to pull the spleen out of the way. Have a good look down there so we can see the left adrenal gland with the phrenic abdominal vein sitting on top of it, and then the left kidney. And then we'll just palpate the. I lost the colon there. And these um, mesenteric lymph nodes are a little bit big. So I'll take a biopsy of that. All right, so now let's just have a good look at the spleen and make sure that there's no abnormal big vessel coming off the splenic vein. Don't see anything there. And so now I'm going to just perforate the momentum and then have a look because this is where we normally see or a common place that we see portosystemic shunts so that's all just portal vein there and that's all normal so then I'm going to come back to the vena cava retract on that for me please again I'm just seeing so that's the left and right renal veins there and then frontal abdominal vein is there you won't be able to see the right frontal abdominal vein and then I'm just going to look a little bit farther cranially to see this is the epiploic frame in here you can do the whipple procedure whipple maneuver when you have a bleeding liver Stick your finger in there and pinch off the hepatic artery in the portal vein. Pringle maneuver? Pringle maneuver. Pringle maneuver, sorry. Not the Whipple maneuver. And so I don't see any abnormal vessels coming off the vena cava anywhere, or coming into the vena cava anywhere. So we don't have an obvious shunt. So now we're just going to do a liver biopsy. And the way that I do a liver biopsy is I just take a tip of the liver and I'll just cut it off with a Metzenbaum. And 
and then I'll just cauterize the cauterize the base. Um, and then let's go back to the mesenteric lymph nodes. Now you can see that all of the blood vessels are coming, in, all the jejunal vessels are coming in through that lymph node. So if you damage those vessels, you're in a heap of trouble. And so we're just going to be very, very careful with how we just take a little piece little piece of that lymph node. Okay, and then I'll just carefully cauterize. Charles, how do you determine where all the liver biopsy? Uh, so because we're just doing a general liver, uh, liver biopsy, we can biopsy anywhere. Um, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just looking for a nice piece that's kind of sticking out. I'm just going to hand off my liver and lymph node biopsies to get those in formalin straight away so they don't dry out. And then we'll get a... Yep. So I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and start our closure. Can I get some 3O PDS in a minute? Yes, please. to make sure that you can you have this in male dogs particularly you have this false linea out here and if you just close that you're going to herniate abdominal contents into the subcutaneous space you have to make sure that we're actually getting all the way down to the body wall And with 3 suture and larger, you need to do at least five throws, well, if not six. This so this dog presented with a history of neurologic signs that may be associated with some spinal disease. Um, and incidentally, because it was showing neurologic signs, they did bile acids and found that they were elevated. So we've done a CT scan, which did not show a portosystemic shunt. So we've gone in surgically to, number one, confirm that it doesn't have a portosystemic shunt, and number two, to do a liver biopsy to see if it has microvascular dysplasia. Now with an X-lap, it's completely fine to do simple continuous suture pattern as long as you're confident in your knots at both ends. Um, Camille, they can start on my next one, please, if there's somebody available. Do you perform 
Um, I do not biopsy the spleen routinely. If there's a lesion on the spleen, usually we just remove it. Um, so if you don't have cautery available, usually what will happen is that if you just take a liver biopsy, it will clot on its own. Or the concern is that if you have liver disease and clotting is abnormal, uh, then you could run into a problem. So the other thing that you can do is a guillotine procedure where you encircle a portion of the liver with one or two sutures. And then when you pull it tight, it's going to crush the liver and ligate the larger blood vessels and then just cut off between your ligatures or distal to your ligature. shorter if you could. So this is that false linear that I'm closing now. Um, Camille, how do, how is this dog to handle? Uh, wiggly. Very wiggly or not really? Very wiggly. Yeah, I'm just wondering about whether we should do intradermals or skin sutures. Probably sounds like intradermals will be the way to go. Very cute wiggly Get some, maybe some four monison. That touched me. Sorry. Um, so I'll take that off. Nick, you happy to do an intradermal there? That's right. Um, all right, so we've finished our X-lap um, on this dog and done our liver biopsy. Um, I'm not going to treat it as a portocyclinic shunt postoperatively, so I don't think that we need to go through all the um, 
issues that we go through regarding potential for, for post-op seizures and that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, Uh, there's a question here about in an aged portosystemic shunt patient with a history of continuous seizures, do you still proceed to close the shunt despite the high possibility of postoperative death? Really good question. We would um, raise that as a concern, but I still think that um, so what we do is put it on Keppra or Levotrastam preoperatively and then make sure that we uh, do whatever we can to avoid um, seizures during hospitalization. And I would still probably do a gradual occlusion of the shunt using an amyloid constrictor, constrictor or a cellophane band. Um, I know that older dogs can have a poorer outcome than younger dogs, um, but look, my general tendency would be understanding the risks that I'd probably still go ahead and do that. So um, anyway, so thank you very much for watching. Um, please uh, like and subscribe um, our channel. and. Uh, make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. And I will be sharing some more cases.